How you guys doing? Welcome to the show. It's finally freaking Friday, baby. And it's going to be a sucky weather, let me tell you that. Here in Northern Illinois, anyway, man, it's supposed to be the 60s. It's not going to be in the 70s again for two damn weeks. Anyway, hopefully this new mic sounds pretty good. I'm going to be using this on the first segment. It seems like our studio mic was uh, really overpowering the OBS. Other than that, I don't know what the hell else to do for you guys. You know, fix your phones, whatever. We're going to be talking about the Great Nordic Biker War today. And boy, they some crazies over in Scandinavia, man. Uh, for those that are too young to remember, this is the war in Scandinavia between the Hells Angels and the Banditos. And it was crazy. They were using anti-freaking-tank guns over there on each other. Uh, it was a pretty wild ride, man. And that war actually led to a lot of other stuff. Uh, I know the Quebec War was going on at that time, but because of what they were doing over in Scandinavia, that led into that shed and massacre where the Scandinavian banditos sponsored the Canadians, which we all know ended up in a eight-member massacre. We got that uh, video. I'll put the link in the description box here over on YouTube. But it was nasty business, really really nasty. See, there's two different cultures between the United States and Europe. And that was more evident when I read a comment on the YouTube channel about my last video, so you're a new club and you want to throw a 1% diamond on. They have a whole process over in the UK. And I would suggest going over and, and checking out Dibber in the Wind. Dibber in the Wind is UK-based, and he knows what they're uh, talking about over there. They have a lot of restrictions that we don't have here in the United States. Their dominance won't hand out 1% diamonds, because that's just not what they do over there. But when they get into some business, they get into some business. I remember when this was happening in live time, man. Uh, we used to... Uh, watch it on uh, some of the older biker news sites and it was crazy man we were just watching like damn an anti-tank gun are you crazy and then you had freaking grenades going off uh i think uh 12 murders uh were involved in this war uh it's quite less than what happened with the quebec war but they still they threw down some serious business so much that eventually like the danes they started banning clubs now you're probably going to say well if the united states clubs don't start getting along i know that's going to be the first damn thing that comes out that's going to happen here well no it's not because we have a different set of laws than they do over in europe they're more how can I say it? Old school, man. You got countries that go back thousands of years and their political system's totally different than what we have here in our Constitution. We have our Bill of Rights, which protects us from a lot of stuff. The First Amendment is, you know, the freedom to associate with whoever you want. Over there, not so much, man. Over there, it's just a way different way of thinking than it is here. They're a lot more hardcore with sticking with their traditions. They don't want to break the traditions over there. And it's something you got to say, man. You got to look up to and say, man, that's pretty cool. You don't want to go against your traditions. Where here in the States, you actually got new clubs that are putting diamonds on that would never get away with it if it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Over there, they got a whole system where they won't allow it. They'll shut it down in a heartbeat over there. And you got people over here that say, you know, well, why ain't the uh, 1% diamonds standing up and not letting it, you know, why are they letting it happen here? It's a whole different ball game, okay? 
there is so much where the feds are all over these clubs that it's ridiculous here in the States. If you piss in the wind wrong here in the United States, you got the feds all over you. You got ATF all over you. DEA. They don't stop, man. They're busybodies here in the United States. So, at that point, the clubs have to look at, is it worth going after these peons that are probably going to disband in a year or two and have one of our members serving 10 to 25 for taking that vest off of them? Because, let's be honest, for those who say, why ain't they doing anything? Let's be honest here. Do you really think they want to risk their brothers to something stupid like these pansies running around that are new wearing 1% diamonds and they know they're going to disband eventually because most of these clubs won't last five years. So why take that kind of risk with your brother's lives? And it also invites more police scrutiny to come your way. So it doesn't make sense, and it doesn't make sense why anybody would care what the clubs are doing if you're not a part of them. You know, you always get that freaking uh, deal where everybody has to get along or this culture ain't going to survive where, you know what, people have been saying that since the 70s. <laughs> Yeah, more technology exists today, and that's one of the reasons why you won't see a lot of stuff pop off. The stuff you do see popping off is really individuals acting apart from the club and doing dumb shit. That's just facts, man, because clubs know that... They can't be a part of that anymore because it costs all kinds of stuff in lawyer fees. And it's just insanity, man. Who wants to deal with it? I think coming up uh, next week, I just want to get that out there. I'm going to try to do a standalone. There is a hill right over the border from me that used to be used for hill climbs and I'm going to do a deal on the hill climb so be looking for that but now let's go over and start our deal on the great Nordic biker wars and uh, again we're going to one percenterbikers.com because they got a good timeline and I always say they're not always right but they got a good timeline of the events and then we'll go back to a newspaper article that covered this uh i'll ask i'll answer some questions from this uh one article that they were putting out uh trying to make uh, clubs look bad and then the uh banishment of the deal with the banditos over in uh denmark i believe it was so one percent of bikers.com hell's angels versus the banditos and this is one of the things that george christie talked about where he actually went over there and was trying to get it cut down because it really was getting bad over there with this war now just some background the Great Nordic Biker War refers to a feud between the Hells Angels and the Banditos in Scandinavia. Again, in Scandinavia, not here in the United States. And before you say, well, that's old news, what's it mean for today? It means a lot that the ones that don't know about this kind of stuff, that don't know their history, learn about it. And unless creators start putting out some history background People aren't going to know because God forbid they go learn it on their own. Anyway, it went from 94 until 97. It's very interesting. The 90s were lit up here from 94 and on in my area and around the country in the United States. Then you had this over in Scandinavia. Then you had the Quebec War happening in Canada. It was really weird stuff back in the 90s, man. Everybody, they just did not like sharing back then. Let's just put it that way. It was pretty hardcore. Uh, 
It's also record, uh, referred to as the Great Northern Biker War or Great Scandinavian Biker War, so you guys know that. Uh, there's three different names for it, the Great Nordic, uh, the Great Northern, and then the Great Scandinavian. Of particular note, and you don't believe this, it believe it, it was being done, anti-tank rockets in multiple attacks were had believed to be stolen from the Swedish army. Yeah, there's a picture of that right there. If you're on the radio, come take a look. Uh, they were bo uh, blowing clubhouses up with these damn things. They weren't using dynamite. They didn't care about doing that. It was too much work. No, let's go get us a freaking anti-tank rocket and let's get some shit blown up. They didn't play around. <laughs> now they call uh he goes and talks about the lead up to this war. Uh He you know what this is very interesting before we can understand the Great Nordic Biker War, we first need to go back to the 1980s in Scandinavia. The Hells Angels moved in the Scandinavia in 1980 taken in United MC much to the dislike of other clubs at the time. Their oppo uh, opponents formed an alliance and created Bullshit MC in uh, 1983 and went to a pub owned by the Hells Angels and results w was the start of war which lasted two years and killed eight Bullshit MC members, one Hells Angel and a civilian. Yeah, people don't like others coming into that territory, man. It kind of pisses them off. Uh, and that's how these European clubs are, man. There is that tradition. Don't break that tradition or is shit's going to fly. Uh, then uh, the in Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen uh, Mortician's MC turned against the Angels. They uh, later changed their name to the Undertakers. And then in 1993 were patched over by the Banditos. Uh, 94 Angels attempted to prevent uh, Morbid's MC from gaining a foothold in the area. So Morbid's MC joined the Banditos Alliance and later on Outlaw MC also joined the Bandito Alliance. Now here is uh, the clubs that were involved in this. Uh, the Banditos were believed to have approximately 130 members based in the region across seven chapters. The Hells Angels, 290 members based in the region across 15 chapters. With the Alliance, you had uh, the Banditos, uh, the Clan, Morbids, Morticians, then the Undertakers, uh, the Hells Angels, uh, the Avengers MC, Screwdrivers MC, and Untouchables. Which, uh, yeah, the Untouchables here in the United States are a cop club. I do not think that's what it is over there, so don't quote me. And then, of course, uh, the Outlaws, they allied with the Banditos over there. The timeline of events is very interesting. 1994, now that is a year in motorcycle history and club history that you really want to know. 1994 was terrible everywhere. Just look at Europe and you'll see how many events took place during 94 all over the world. Uh, the 26th of January, there's a shooting at the Morbid's MC Clubhouse. Uh, on, in February, there's a shooting between Hells Angels and Banditos. Uh, Hells Angel member Hakeem Bowman is killed. Uh, again, in February, here it is. An anti-tank rocket is fired at the Hells Angels clubhouse. They weren't playing around. No dynamite under the cars. No, just stood out in front of that clubhouse and pulled that trigger. Uh, the 22nd of June in Finland, a clam uh, MC president is shot and killed by a Hells Angels member. Uh, again, in 1995, uh, Ulsa, Norway, there was a shootout between a Hells Angel and Banditos. One person is wounded. 90, and you see it's starting to take over the whole Nordic type of country deal. 
Uh, let's see here. 95, uh, the Finland Bandito MC president, Michael uh, Joe, is killed. 95, they, uh, the Banditos fire another anti-tank rocket at a Hell's Angels Perspective clubhouse in Helinski. Uh, then on uh, July 26, they didn't stop there. They fired another anti-tank rocket at a Hell's Angel Prospect Clubhouse in Helsingborg. In 95, Banditos, uh, uh, it is in December, they beat two Hell's Angel members in a clubhouse. Uh, man. Hell's Angels Oslo, Norway in 96 was attacked uh, in a bombing. Uh, an own... Uh, a bar owned by a Hells Angels is bomb. They didn't play around, man. It goes all the way up here. Uh, then it goes to, let's see here, 97, which is interesting. Uh, January, Outlaw MC President Thor uh, Hecky Holm, an Outlaws member from France, are shot and wounded by a member of the Untouchables who were allies with the HA. Uh, then it just keeps on going. Then a car bomb explodes outside uh, Bandito's clubhouse. So the bombs were kicking butt back then and rockets. It ain't like today, man. That was the biggest thing that you had to worry about back then was the bombs right under your car, man. You always used to check your car for bombs. Uh, but they actually went further, man, with these rocket deals. I don't think that's ever been done in the United States. I'll check it out, but I don't think so. Uh, at the time of the declaration of the end of the war, the two groups agreed that no further chapters would be open in enemy territory. However, this agreement has since broken down with multiple chapters being opened by both groups, including Bandito's chapters in Agmar and Odense in Denmark. Here's some victims of the war. There was 11 killed, and that is just amazing that only 11 people were killed considering the rockets. Uh, there was 11 killed. There was a civilian uh, woman not affiliated with any club. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mikel Lujan. Banditos, 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 Hells Angels, Hells Angels, Hells Angels, Hells Angels. It just keeps going down like that. There was 74 attempted murders and 96 wounded. And it looks like there's only a few people arrested during this deal. Uh, one, uh, for example, a Hells Angel prospect responsible for the March 1996 uh, Banditos Holinsky Finland clubhouse murders. He received 12 and a half year prison uh, sentence. And we talked about the different prison sentences around the world, man. They're a lot different than what we got. Uh, then the Great Nordic Biker War Rocker Act. It was called. It was passed by the government in Denmark and came into play on the 15th of October 1996. And the act provided police with more power against bikers and also aims to prevent the assembly of members at their clubhouse. So you see the different type of justice systems, the t different type of political passages of bills that they do compared to us. Now, the, there was further uh, conflicts that came out of this, and especially in 2001, uh, the former Banditos president, Klaus Borg Hansen, is shot 26 times, dying as a result of the wounds. Uh, after being thrown out of, a band, uh, of the Banditos, he had gone on to create a red and white support club. Four members of the Banditos were later charged. Yeah, he's going to die. He got shot 26 freaking times, man. Uh, so he basically went to the other side. They ain't going to be playing that crap right there. So that is kind of your background on the Great Nordic Biker War from 1percentbikers.com. You got to go over there and see their site. They're also on Facebook and stuff. Real good site to go uh, get some uh, background information. Now, here we go from 1996. This is how they were covering it through the Independent. This was May 11th, 1996 again. Uh, their title to this article was Biker Wars Dredge Up Something Rotten in the State of Denmark. The Angels and Banditos are fighting across Scandinavian 
uh, with anti-tank rockets and grenades. Woo! Ouch. Uh, the mean machine is laying low in Eslener, but everyone in Denmark knows that the war is far from over. Until the past few days, the worst violence experienced by the people of this small tourist town on Denmark's northern coast has been the drunken punch-ups with the Swedes around the Kronberg Castle on Saturday nights. Now there are fears that the Banditos biker gang is moving into it big time. They are armed to fight Hell's Angels, not with slings and chains of yesteryear, but with anti-tank rockets and grenades. Uh, they were going into... They were actually taking bets on this. Who was going to win this war? Can you believe it? The citizenry? Uh, quote, I think the Banditos are going to win. They are the meanest, said a young man quivering uh, for the ferry across the Sound in Sweden, where anti-tank rockets blasted a rocker club. Quote, hurt one of us and we all bleed. That's what they believe. That's their honor cold. Uh, wow. Yeah, man, they were actually putting on bets who's going to win this war back then. That just tells you the difference in thinking that people back then had compared to what they have now. That's the best way to explain it to you. Uh... A victim of Ilsner's new honor code lies bleeding in the hospital. A bandito leader lost a leg uh, that week after the enemy Hell's Angels lobbed a grenade into his cell at an open prison. Oh, they didn't care, man. They went into the prison just throwing shit. Uh, they, everybody was hitting back. It was just nasty business back then, man. Uh, you're, they didn't care, man. Throwing grenades in the freaking... Uh, prison cell <laughs> uh let's see here uh there we go let's go to the netherlands one uh this was the actually 2017 so that war had less uh, uh you know lasting effects on that whole region uh, judges in Netherlands had banned the banditos biker gang saying it posed a public threat the Dutch government ultimately has plans to make all biker gangs illegal, including the infamous Hells Angels. Uh, the world's second largest biker gang, the Banditos, were banned by a court in the Netherlands on Wednesday, December 20th. And I believe this is 2017, yes. Uh, the case was brought by the Dutch Prosecution Service, which claimed the Banditos were involved in drugs and gun trafficking and prostitution. Uh, then the Justice Minister, of course, they welcomed it. You know, I gotta look uh, if they didn't appeal on this. I remember they might have. Uh, they also uh, were pressing on with plans to, uh, with all, including indigenous motorcycle clubs like uh, No Surrender or Satadera. Uh, so then they go on about how the Banditos were started in 66, uh, expanded uh, the whole nine yards. Uh, let's see. Well, that's flag track one. Let's go back uh, to this. And I think I'm going to be covering this again because it has some very interesting questions in it that I'd like to answer. You know, it'd be kind of like a, you know, Myself, interim view, and myself. I don't know. Uh, but people need to uh, look at these uh, questions that it has. Uh, we don't have that much more time on it. But it is also, coincidentally, it came out June 6, 2015, where some of the questions are, the gangs truly dangerous? Uh, when did diverse gangs emerge? What about today? How do these gangs operate? That's what they were talking about in this deal from The Week. Yes, The Week. And some of the other stuff that's going to be coming up is American uh, Flat Track Racing Mounts a Comeback. I think I'm going to do an uh, independent uh, video on that because that's something I really love to uh, do is that one right there. So, yeah, the Great Nordic Biker War, man. Could you believe uh, something like that? 
happening in here in the United States. A rocket attack, man. They'd have feds all over the damn place. Uh, then next thing you know, they're labeling all motorcycle clubs terrorist organizations. Something like this really isn't possible here in the States. Back in the 90s, you had, at that time, at that time, but not now, was the second biggest domestic bombing in the United States, and that was here in Chicago, between the uh, outlaws and the Hell's Enchantment at the time. And then after Oklahoma City, then it became the third. But there was some serious stuff happening. I know some guys... Uh, in Rockford, they had bombs placed under their truck. Uh, there was a lot of stabbings, a lot of shootings back then. Uh, so the 90s was crazy altogether for everybody. You had it in Europe. You had it in Canada. You had it here in the United States. I didn't even look up Australia because Australia, they just seem like they're on a freaking roll, man, all the time. They're always going at it over there. That's why I call them the crazy Aussies, man, because they just don't stop, man. I, I just don't think they understand or they haven't got the message that over there is a lot different than over here, where over there they're taking away your rights left and right because you have a different system of justice than we have here in the United States. But you got to give it to them, man. They, they're hardcore freaking uh, gangster over in Australia. And I call them that because the some of the stuff that you're seeing them do revolves around a lot of money. Now, if you're going to come back and you're going to say, well, and I'm talking about the Australia right now. Let's not say it's, I'm not saying it's here in the States. But when you're talking about Australia, you're talking about some gang banging over there, man. And I think, and a lot of people have said it's a lot more about that than it is about the motorcycle. And you're going to say, well, you know, you can't believe that. Well, you know what? When somebody gets busted living in a million dollar home, they ain't out there freaking playing uh, patty cake and doing a nine to five job. You know, if you think that's what's happening, you're kind of fooling yourself. That's just my point of view. So I'll check into the, uh, the Australian stuff there in the 90s, but man, the whole damn freaking, uh, I should do a video on the 90s alone, man. You'd be surprised uh, at that stuff that went down. So right now I got China Dow in the house. We're going to go and uh, do the second segment here over on Motorcycle Madhouse Radio.com. Come on over and join us. You'll love it. Talk to you there.